Now joining us live from our guest here in Somalia via Skype is Sadia Abdi Alin, the country director for Action Aid. Very good morning to you. Thanks very much for joining us. Just explain to us, Sadia, why female genital mutilation is so widespread. What's the justification there? Um, actually, my country has the highest prevalence of FGM in the world, where virtually all girls are affected at age of four to eleven years. 98% of our girls, they go through that horrendous practice. And as a Somali society, we are known as a hardliners to preserve our cultural practices, regardless it is consequence of women's welfare. Um, and therefore the families, they considering it as a traditional practices and families are likely to consider social risks to be greater than physical and mental health of the young girls. So it is deep rooted to traditional practice that passage uh, for girls from childhood to, to womanhood. And it is considered as a necessary means to protect girls from sexual, um, um, casual sex, uh, which literally means controlling women's sexuality. You've been speaking out against FGM for many years. You managed, thankfully, to save your younger sister from going through this brutal process. How did you manage to do that? Actually, um, knowing the fact that the consequence of FGM is always horrific and a long term affecting girls, um, physical health and mental well-being, um, which does not end there. Um, so it is like a lifetime. And for safety and when it's alive, it also um, gives you the peace that you are capable to save more. Um, and it takes a lot of courage and, and convictions to go against the rules and um, to talk about stopping FGM. And, and thankfully, it has worked for me well, and I'm so proud of it. And um, let me take you, give you an example. When my sister, she gave birth, she gave me that gratitude and she said, you Sadia, you saved my life. And FGM usually does not end there. It's always continues a torture of, of women's lives, like um, reopening, teaching again and again, and it doesn't end there. It's like every day. And one of the most agonizing feeling that any woman can feel is the feeling of less woman. That's the common word that I have here in my everyday life. Whenever women, they're talking about that practice, they feel less women. And that's something that you will be proud of, that at least you can save one and you're striving to save more. It's an incredible so job. I would like to take this. So I would like to take this opportunity to appeal for the parents around the globe, particularly for my fellow Somalis, wherever they are in the world. This is the time that we take action to stop this hyenas practice and save our daughters. They are our daughters. We have the chance today to save them in a lifetime. And also my message goes to the religious leaders. This is the time that you break the silence of FGM, talk about the welfare of the young girls. And also, I would like to reach out the frontline campaigners, like Action Aid people. We can stop, it is possible, don't give up. I know it is difficult, it is Islam or our those in faith is like, but let's continue. We can save lives, we can stop this practice in our lifetime. And also there has been a wafer from um, traditional practitioners towards the medical practitioners. For the medical practitioners, this is a bridge for your ethics. You are trained to save lives, not to mutilate innocent girls.